Hey, what's up, guys? Dropship Tyler here, and this is really kind of my first scheduled live. I mean, I've done one in the past, but never really, uh, never really planned it out like a week in advance. So, pretty excited to see how many people come. Uh, let me pull up the chat here, and hopefully, we can get some good questions. Oh, but I want to start off by just saying, oh. Paul J. Lipsky is here. What's up, Phil? I like how Paul's just trolling me because he knows I uh, I want to talk about Amazon, but can't right now. So anyway, and I'm sure you guys have heard my explanation of that in the past. I can talk about some basic stuff, but uh, in terms of more advanced stuff, you know, I was taught by Mac Gambrell, and part of our agreement was that, you know, it would stay between us what what we're doing so um until that changes yeah it is what it is and i respect it but yeah i wanted to talk about ebay drop shipping and 99 dollars super chat that's a that would that would be paying me back paul for all the super chats i've i've uh i've given you i don't monetize my channel so i can't take super chats if you guys know what those are but um Basically, you can pay to have a uh, comment highlighted, and I do that on Paul's channel all the time for marketing purposes. <laughs> and I try to uh, try to draw some of his subscribers to to my channel by buying like you know ten twenty dollar super chats, getting my comments highlighted, and that's my marketing budget for the day. And I tell Paul, I told Paul last time straight up when I did the super chat, "Hey man, this is my uh, this is my marketing budget for the day," and yeah. I guess he thought it was funny because he called it out. But anyway, I want to start off by talking about some eBay drop shipping and kind of some things that are really, I guess, pissing me off with eBay. And I mean, I should be happy because the thing is, is I'm going to take my phone. I wasn't going to do this originally on my phone, but I want to take my phone and show you guys, um, you as you Many of you know I'm doing a I'm doing a challenge where I start with zero, and I build a eBay store. And I just want to show you guys, and this is what bothers me. So if you look at my phone here, I've been doing it for two weeks, and I haven't really spent that much time on it. And as you can see, I've sold almost five hundred dollars worth of items, and I have sixteen sold. So that's huge compared to what it was when I just did. I think I froze. My computer's really slow. But anyway, it's frustrating because it 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 means that like it's not it's not eBay that's you know really slow. It's the fact that eBay is choosing to give new sellers and this account has zero feedback. Uh, so and I actually have a margin on on these items. Like you know I've made over thirty dollars now off of off of these sales. And like I said, it's awesome for the challenge, but if you look at just the whole scenario of what's going on, eBay is is treating old accounts that do drop shipping like you know they're suppressing the search results, obviously, and they're giving these they're giving these new. <clears throat> so I'm trying to catch up with uh, the chat here. So yeah, they're they're giving these new sellers, such as this new account sales like when they don't deserve it really i mean they're brand new to the platform i've never started an ebay account and had this many sales right off the bat and right now is supposedly the worst time for ebay drop shipping but if you start a new account it's just like it's gold there's people in my mentoring group who they start a new account they list 10 percent of the items they have on their main account and boom they they get just as many if not more sales and obviously the costs are cheaper so ebay right now is completely favoring new accounts and i don't i know that there are some ways i for based on how you know I've, I've talked to some merchant reps there's ways ebay knows what a dropping a drop shipping account looks like obviously based on metrics um people say you know tracking validated and uploaded on time like things like that but also the api if you attach software to an ebay account you're pretty much automatically going to be you no know, you are going to be automatically flagged as a drop shipper and also the merchant rep that I spoke to uh, told me just 
if a software isn't really, they, they recognize all the big ones. So they recognize DSM tool, they recognize sale freaks, uh, price yak, all the softwares eBay can recognize as drop shipping softwares. Like that's a no, but also these softwares that they don't really know about. If it's interacting, uh, this, this is what the merchant rep told me. If it's interacting with the, the API, um, in a way that makes everything look more automated, then it's actually going to flag that account too. And it's going to be, um, the, the eBay algorithm is going to look at that in a negative light. So the most interesting thing to me is the whole problem that eBay has with drop shippers is the, um, out of stocks, you know, canceling orders because people don't want to take losses and stuff. If a price goes up all that, whatever. And it makes no sense to me because if that were the case, then why would eBay not be encouraging dropshippers to use as much software as they can if they're going to allow dropshipping at all? Because then if something's repricing, you know, every, and, and this is another thing people say that if, if items reprice too much, um, you know, the algorithm's not going to like that too. But at the same time, what, if, if eBay really, if the issues stem from a customer service perspective where people um, you know, are getting orders canceled on them when they buy things, stuff like that because of out of stocks. Why would eBay not encourage people to use software, repricing software, whatever, and instead of looking at it in a negative light? Instead, you know, I created this account that's a manual account and it's a brand new account. I mean, how does eBay even know that I'm gonna treat the customer well, even ship the items out, whatever, and all of the sales are going to accounts like that, it seems. I've talked to a lot of people who just start accounts and their sales boost off right away. And it's just, it doesn't make any sense to me that, you know, eBay would do this obviously because I have two big accounts. Uh, I still do decent sales on there, but I've had to lower my margin to making almost nothing on the front end, which is fine as long as I can stay competitive and do a lot of volume. But it's also very frustrating uh, because I'm now tax exempt and I have all these certificates and yeah, it helps me for Amazon drop shipping. And I'm tax exempt in every state that um, that you know Walmart requires you to get permits and all of that now. But for eBay, if I had just gotten tax exempt at the beginning of the year, um, I looked at I looked at how much sales tax I've paid. You can you can look at that and pull a report on Sale Freaks. Paid over twenty five thousand dollars in sales tax to Amazon. So if I had just taken the time to get tax exempt at the beginning of the year, then I would have an extra twenty five thousand dollars now because the buyers would have been paying that sales tax and I would have just been remitting it to the state. But instead, I was the one that was paying the sales tax. So, you know, and I always said, oh yeah, you don't have to be tax exempt to, uh, to do this. But I changed my mind on that because of the way things have been lately, where being tax exempt is probably the only thing that's gonna keep you in the game, um, to be honest, and having that 5% cash back card if you're looking to do a high volume approach. And that's why when I started my mentorship program, I said that, you know, I was mainly looking for people that have the 5% cashback card or who are tax exempt because I knew those were the people that I would be able to help the most and be able to give them like a guarantee that this is going to work. The other people, it's, it's still very, I mean, it's doable, but you have to be more about optimization. You have to be willing to open new accounts all the time, things like that. So it's just more challenging if you don't have those two aspects uh, with the Amazon to eBay dropshipping. Um, I watched a little bit of someone else's live, Tom's live before this, and he talked similar about the Amazon to eBay game right now. Uh, I don't know if he's willing to go as low as I am on margins. So he's looking at other suppliers. Obviously, my manual account is all Walmart. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm not giving up on, on sale freaks, obviously. I still make money from it. It's just, it's nothing like it was before. But for example, the other day, I made $300 of cash back and nothing on the front end, which I'm perfectly okay with, to be honest. Like that's perfectly fine with me. I don't mind being super competitive and people can talk shit all they want to. And people did in, you know, this, in Tom's Facebook group, the dropship university that, you know, I, that I was deceiving people saying that, um, you know, I, I did $3 million in sales this year, but yeah, it's 8% profit with 5% cash back, blah, 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 whatever. And I'm straight up with you guys about that. That's the way I stay competitive. And I know plenty of other sellers out there that will back me on that and say, yeah, that's the way to stay competitive is by lowering your margin and just being willing to take, 
take uh, more cash back and do more volume. So especially with the um, the coupons now that Sale Freaks has, where uh, it actually clicks the Amazon coupon before ordering. Honestly, I'm gonna make a few hundred dollars this month off of that alone. So, I mean, just little things like that will add up for me. And yeah, and then obviously I'm just I'm willing to take cash back if I can make two fifty to three hundred dollars a day in cash back. I'm willing to do that and break even on the front end just to stay competitive. So, um, yeah, I mean, sorry for the rant. Sorry for being a little hyped up. I, uh, I, it really irked me for some reason when this account did this, this account with 12 items did like five sales today or something like that. And it just, like I said, it irked me because it's just so easy for a new account to get sales. And I haven't opened up a new account in a while. So this right here is like my first experience with it. Yeah, it's great for the eBay challenge because it provides like a lot of entertainment and it's good for YouTube content. But at the same time, like, I don't, I don't think it's very realistic. Like I, I'm not going to sell. It's been two weeks and I've sold, as you can see, I have 14 items listed and I've sold 16. Like that's not, that trend is not going to continue. And at least I don't think it will. I mean, if it does, that's awesome. And I'll just do a course about doing everything manually. But at the same time, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Let's see what we got in the, uh, let's see what we got in the chat here. All right. So got some, how many people do we even have now that I'm done with my rant? All right. We got 40. Awesome. Thanks for showing up guys. Uh, I really appreciate you supporting my channel, you know, coming to the lives, um, especially with this this new schedule I have. I was feeling a little burnt out today, to be honest, because I'm trying to do a video, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and then I'll probably even do some on the weekends sometimes. So, yeah, I was feeling a little burnt out. went to bed at like 2.30 last night, uh, woke up at 5.30 this morning, I'm just like mind racing about just a bunch of different stuff and, you know, trying to create um, – content for you guys that actually brings value uh, in a time when I feel like it's needed most because, you know, a lot of people are dropping out and I don't blame them. Um, you know, some people's circumstances are different than others. For me, I have Amazon. I have, you know, I don't make a lot of money from YouTube, but I make some money from YouTube with sale freaks and, you know, Mr. Rebates and my course now and all that. So I make some money from that, but at the same time, you know, I want my eBay to be like it was again. So that's a frustrating situation, but I can wait it out. And that's really kind of what I'm doing right now. You know, if I can, if I can just stay profitable, I feel like I'll be so much better at drop shipping when I come out of this because of all the experimenting I've done now in the past like couple months. So yeah, if it ever goes back to the way it was, then things are going to be amazing. That's, I mean, that's how I view it, you know? So hopefully eBay can get their, their uh, shit together and, you know, allow us to, to take care of our customers, the people that have big accounts and have been doing it for a while. I mean, allow us to take care of our customers, you know? Um, I honestly think they would rather have my, my employees, my customer support, you know, taking care of, people than a brand new account that just gets in and, you know, doesn't really know what they're doing. So anyway, let me go up here and now let me look at the chat. All right. Is Matt coming out with the course? I don't know. Uh, I need to talk to him and figure that out. Do I use promoted listings? Paul, no, I do not use promoted listings. My strategy is the low front end margin. So I don't want to mess with uh, promoted listings. And obviously right now there's an issue on eBay with promoted listings. Every single person's promoted listings have tanked. It's broken. I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, but they're not, I don't think they're suppressing the, um, the promoted listings. The thing with the thing with the promoted listings, if you, I sat there and I listened to the uh, eBay call and I'm the, the investor call or the, you know, the quarterly call, but and I'm sure you did too, Paul, or the earnings call. Sorry. I'm sure you did too, Paul. And because uh, I know you care a lot about uh, being in the know and, you know, being able to report back on stuff. 
the biggest takeaway from that was they want more promoted listings. They said they're going to try to fill basically the entire screen with promoted listings. Um, that's their whole goal is they think they can, they, they think they can double the amount of money they generate from promoted listings over the next year or even more than that. I can't remember the exact numbers in the call, but yeah, so what, it doesn't make sense that they would, um, that they would cut promoted listings. So this is a temporary thing and it's obviously affecting, um, it's obviously affecting, you know, all traffic on eBay, whether it's outside sources or within eBay, be, customers being able to find stuff that's promoted. Uh, it's just not showing up in front of them. So it's obviously, you know, a huge issue. Uh, and, the, and again, I, that's, I don't use promoted listings right now. I was up until two weeks ago until I decided to lower my margin. Everyone in my mentoring group, I was telling to use the promoted listing and put a, a, a two to 4% front end margin. People that had the 5% uh, cash back card. So yeah, that was part of my strategy before, but now, you know, I've had to experiment, especially with the mentoring group that I'm doing. I want to experiment as much as possible so that I can then take everything that I learned and, you know, give it back to them. And I also, you know, I, I thought I found something yesterday that I was really excited about and I jumped the gun and I was just like, no, I don't want to tell anyone about it yet because I don't want to get anyone's hopes up, whatever. And then today, yesterday was amazing. I made a ton of money on the front end yesterday with what I was doing as an experiment. That was like the one exception of yesterday or the one exception to my low margin rule was yesterday. And then today sales tanked again. So it's just like, it's never going to be consistent. I feel like until eBay gets their, gets their stuff together. But if you're a new seller, now's a great time to get in. I'll say that. And honestly, if you're this, and I know this is going to sound super annoying to you guys who don't want to do this, but I would highly recommend that you start a manual store. Um, if you don't know how to how to go about doing that, watch the series that I'm doing and take away as much as you can about the way I'm listing products or the, you know, I, I had an Excel sheet that I showed yesterday on how I track my profits. Um, I had a couple sales today actually uh, that were a slight loss because the price went up, but I made up for it because I sold a multi-quantity uh, or I made a multi-quantity sale on Walmart where I got to keep the 599 shipping from each item. So I made up for that, had a high margin sale, had a couple losses, but when you're doing manual drop shipping and you don't have any cost, I mean, it's going to happen. So it's annoying, but I would recommend that you start a manual account to go with whatever software you're using now, or, you know, if you're, if you're sale freaks and you're in my mentoring group, um, you know, obviously, Sale Freaks wants everyone to grow their plan as much as possible within Sale Freaks. And before I was a huge advocate of just constantly listing, constantly listing and just upping your store. They do have that promotion going on right now, which is like, it's 2.5 cents a listing, which is a month, which is amazing. And you can definitely make money on that. But at the same time, I'm more, you know, I'm more worried about everyone being successful that's watching my channel. And I think to do that, you have to start a manual store. Obviously I'm not going to make any money from that because there's no software or anything like that. I can promote to you, but just like being genuine with you guys, it's clear that the manual store is, is going to work better. I think in the long run. Um, but you know what, the thing about me doing this series, if you want to sit back and wait and, you know, see if in two months, if my sales tank, because eBay is, flagged me based on my my shipping location or anything like that you guys can sit back you can watch me and you can see how it goes if my sales stay pretty consistent and grow steadily and i'm not having too many customer service issues you know things of that nature then then you know go for it but yeah i'm just saying from what i've seen now and what i've talked to people who are doing manual listings and, and manual repricing and, and everything manual i mean it's just a game changer so yeah, like I said, it sucks I can't make any money off you guys with that, but <laughs> I like giving away the uh, the information so you guys stick around too. So, but um, actually, wait, I can make money off off of that. I have a twenty dollar virtual assistant course that's in the description, and yeah, if you want to buy that and do your manual store, that'll help you. But um, yeah, guys, let me get back to some of these questions. All right. 
smack that like button. Nice. Hey, 14 likes. That's the most, uh, that's the most likes I think I've ever had during a live, but all right. How many VAs are working on your main account? Travis, I actually only have one customer service VA per account right now. And then because of the way eBay has been lately, I've just been grinding so hard on my own for the past like three, four weeks with listing. I was listing on my own for the past few months now, but mainly using the locator and um, Chili Hunter. But now I've been doing things a little bit differently and I've really taken some time to get back in the uh, the trenches and and really just experiment with all kinds of different things like I, I first did when I first started eBay. Um, I feel like I have an obligation to really make this, you know, be as be as uh, optimal as possible and as efficient as possible and learn new things and experiment so that I can, you know, give back to the community like this and just talk about the things I'm learning about because, yeah, it's not great right now. Software gets more sales because without software, dropshippers would be clogging up eBay servers with random crap that isn't likely to sell. Yeah, I, I mean, do you have that backwards luxury card store? I mean, I, I, I found that software gets less sales right now for me, but also it's because I have a new account. I mean, if, if you start a new account and you upload a thousand sale freaks products, yeah, you're going to get a ton of sales too. But, and same with DSM tools, same with, you know, easy and see all those softwares. But at the same time, it's about it's about, you know, one or two months down the road. How's that store going to perform? I'm curious to see. And from what I've heard, I think a manual store will perform better in the long run. And um, I actually have a video coming out tomorrow. This this will this is pretty interesting. So there's a guy I'm not going to say his username and I'm not going to uh, show it tomorrow in the video. But I filmed this video like last week. I decided to buy something from a uh, top rated seller or top rated plus seller that's drop shipping from Amazon. And it looks like he's doing it all manual. And it's pretty interesting because I purchased the item. It's actually the first thing I've ever bought on eBay. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty excited to share that video because it's pretty interesting the things that eBay allows him to get away with. And I kind of test him a little bit in the video. Um, with with what he's doing and unfortunately for me i couldn't test him too much because he had a picture of where the item was delivered to and it was my house so yeah i couldn't test him too much i wanted to test him more because it was an amazon logistics tracking but at the same time i mean yeah ebay lets the seller get away with it obviously because they're top rated plus which you have to fake tracking if you're going to be top rated plus on ebay if you're a drop shipper all right, let's see. Noah, love your channel. Hey man, thanks for uh, thanks for the support. I appreciate it for sure. Is your account variations or did you new account start above 10 listing limit or do you call me? Okay, so John, here's what's interesting. When I listed my first product, actually, let me show you guys what I listed to start real quick. All right. So the first products I ever listed is I found these in my golf bag and they're noodle golf balls. So I listed these so that if eBay suspended my account, I could call in and say, oh yeah, I'm listing, I'm listing a bunch of golf stuff I have laying around and I want to, you know, I, yeah, I want to sell it on eBay. So that's what I did is I saw, I listed these golf balls. As soon as I listed the golf balls, my I got a message saying that my limits increased from 10 items to 500 items. So it was like 10 items and a thousand dollars or something like that to 500 items and $25,000 right away. So I didn't have to call in. I, ha I didn't have to do anything. I just got super lucky. What's interesting though is eBay did end up suspending my account. I had like five products I listed. eBay suspended this account. And I had to call in. And what's awesome is I did get to say I'm listing I'm listing golf stuff. Like that's all I'm doing is I'm just trying to sell my own stuff. I have other accounts on the platform, blah blah blah. And they reopened my account. So listing something around your house when you're opening a new account is 
is key. And it's kind of funny because I talk about, I've talked about the David Vu method and how, you know, how I started off with that and I didn't think it worked anymore as well as, you know, it did. Maybe it works for some people, but we're like reverting back to the David Vu method, like with, but not a 1.4 markup, you know, it's 1.25, 1.2 is fine. And then being tax exempt and, um, you know, making your money on the, on the back end is, is fine, but you know, optimization and he preaches to get feedback and stuff like that list products around your house, like to make sure your account doesn't get suspended list products around your house. That way you can always say and not be lying to eBay. Oh yeah. I'm selling, I'm selling stuff around my house. I'm also thrifting some stuff. I am selling stuff from some suppliers too. Um, you know, I'm doing a little bit of everything. That's kind of what I tell eBay whenever, and that's why I've always told eBay when I've gotten a raise on, on my account, I always say I'm drop shipping, but I say, but I say I'm doing other stuff as well. Like for this new account, I didn't say drop shipping. I just said, I'm, I'm selling golf stuff. And that worked because the first product I ever listed was these golf balls. So yeah. All right, let me see what else we got here. I don't even know what time it is. I've just been ranting the whole time. All right. Yep, James says, Tyler, I've noticed the same thing. Old accounts are absolutely crushed in search slash traffic. Yes, so you're going to have all these noobs think it's awesome for two to six months making money from home, and then you're going to get crushed like us. James, no, that's what I'm saying. I don't think I honestly don't think that it's going to drop off as hard as uh, an account with software. I mean, I'm not, I'm not making any promises obviously, because I think the worst thing possible is when someone, you know, quits their job too early, doesn't know what they're getting themselves into. And then boom, their sales go down. They're screwed. You know, they have to fight to get it back up and they're never going to be able to fight in time. You know, that fast enough, hard enough, to be able to make up for whatever income they left their job to do. And that's why also nowadays, if you're going to quit your job to do this, highly recommend that you have multiple accounts. Um, now I'm going to recommend that you have multiple ways of selling the item. So like one with software, one with manual, whatever. Also make sure you're getting into Amazon drop shipping and researching it. And I know I can't talk about it too much on my channel right now, but I promise you there's resources out there for you to start and yeah, um, make sure you understand the Amazon metrics. And if, you know, if you're staying, if you're staying below Amazon's radar by keeping your metrics high, you're going to be fine. Just make sure that you know how you can, uh, not manipulate the metrics, but you know, make the metrics work in your favor when certain situations happen. So always be looking at, the next in income stream. And to be honest with you, I mean, I'll be straight up with you guys. When I started YouTube eight months ago, my, my eBay was, was at its peak. Like I literally had uh, two months back to back where I made over, over, it was like one month was like 15.5 K of gross profit. So it ended up being like 12 to 13 K net. And then, um, the other month was right around the same, like back to back in, in uh, March and April. And so I started my YouTube channel right around there and I did it at a, at a time when I was like literally doing my best in e-commerce and I was putting work into it and I wasn't making any money. But as an entrepreneur, I knew that I was like, okay, I need to figure out how to, how to do something else. And maybe I thought, you know, teaching people how to do what I'm doing and also building my personal brand at the same time. Uh, it's also when I started listening to Gary V I had just gotten back from uh, Nicaragua and moved into my own place. Cause I don't know if you guys know this about me, but when I quit my job, my apartment lease ended uh, the, so here's, here's how it worked. I quit my job or sorry, my apartment lease ended. I still had a week left at my job and it was 30 minutes North of Charlotte. Um, up in the uh, Lake Norman area, if you guys are familiar with this area, anyone in here. But um, my friend actually, he had, he lived in that area also, and he needed a dog sitter. So for the last week I was at work, I was dog sitting this this giant Weimaraner, and I stayed at their place for a week. After that, I moved in with my parents for like two or three months because my parents were really adamant about making sure that 
like they were they were supportive of me uh, doing this full time, but at the same time they were very they were very troubled that like I was leaving something so secure as a financial analyst and moving into you know something that's like not known. I'd only been doing it for six months, and the month I quit, I that's like the first month that I literally made as much as uh, I was making at my job. So yeah, I had just gotten back from Nicaragua, and then I got this apartment that I'm in now, and. I decided, you know, I'd start my YouTube channel and start building my personal brand. And that's what I did. So it, I highly suggest that, you know, everyone, everyone that's watching this video now or, you know, watches it in the future, just figure out a way to always be, even if, even if you think you're on top right now and, you know, you're doing something, you're making a lot of money at it. Now start building out that next stream of income. So that's what I'm doing here. I know a lot of people are tuning in to watch me about eBay and talk about eBay or talk about Amazon, but I'm just, you know, I'm big on, I'm big on uh, security. And if you're an entrepreneur, one stream of income, it's not secure. So yeah. And that's, what's allowing me to, you know, spend my time on, on teaching eBay and also doing eBay because I have three streams of income right now between YouTube, eBay and Amazon. So I, I still feel you know, pretty secure, but it would suck if something happened to eBay where, you know, drop shipping wasn't allowed anymore. And then I just, I lose my entire eBay channel and, you know, cause there's people not watching anymore because eBay drop shipping doesn't exist or something. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's interesting. And then, uh, yeah, it, even though it's multiple streams of income, it's like multiple within the same field. So yeah, it's interesting. And sorry for, sorry for that rant. Kashan, yeah, I saw Blue Care packaging is start validated with eBay now, so we're gonna be able to be top rated um, with that Blue Care package or Blue Care Express. That's pretty awesome. And if, for those of you guys that aren't aware, then obviously you know you're not you're probably not sale free users, so don't don't worry about it. All right, wouldn't manual stores be viable with a team of VAs? Yes, 100%. Because uh, I've, honestly, everything is manual with Amazon except for repricing. So yeah. Peter, he said he called them, got a 10 to 200. Nice. Yeah, you can get you can get increases pretty quick. All right. It never made sense to me why it never made sense to me why eBay would go against drop shipping on from Amazon. It only adds to their bottom line. Yeah, and here's the thing. If you think about it logically, there's a ton of Amazon sellers that don't want to sell on eBay. So there's a huge inventory gap for all of the items that are on Amazon that are private labeled, you know, or whatever. And it's just like, it's just like, why would they not let us sell those items and, you know, really try to boost those up, whatever, because dropshippers are the only ones offering those items. So yeah, it's, and instead eBay is trying to focus their whole, their whole like Vero program and stuff. They're trying to sign sellers up for that. Honestly, like it's what I've heard. They're trying to sign people up that are private labeling on Amazon and, you know, trying to protect them and have them come over to eBay and start selling their products on eBay and basically guaranteeing them that they'll be the only seller because you know they can have they can be in the Vero program, all of that. I mean, eBay is just not that appealing to probably a lot of these private private label people who are looking for super passive income and they're not really sure how they would drop ship the product from Amazon themselves. So yeah, it's like Yes, I mean these sellers that, that are doing FBA. Obviously, they're doing FBA because they want someone else to handle their inventory. And yeah, there's there are inventory warehouses, like third-party inventory warehouses, where these sellers can store their inventory, and then they could have uh, they could have that person um, pick and pack their item and ship it out. You know, when it sells on any other platform, so like Walmart or uh, eBay or Etsy or whatever. But you know, a lot of these people that are just doing private label. And kind of dabbling in it, they're not gonna, they're not gonna, they're not gonna uh, go go to all those different um, platforms right away. So yeah, there's a huge inventory gap that we can fill for eBay. Anybody know a repricer that doesn't use API? Yes. So the repricer that doesn't use API, it's called SkewGrid, <clears throat> and I honestly, that's the one I'm gonna use as soon as. I get to that $50 profit mark, which right now I'm at a little over 30. 
on that that manual store. All right, I was just checking to see if I sold another item. Because if I did, I would have been pissed that I that I did. Because obviously, like I said, I want. I mean, it's cool for the for the YouTube channel, but I just don't want to give people unrealistic expectations. I was hoping it would. I was hoping that I would have to grind it out a little bit, and have some people be like, "Oh, he's not. He can't do it. It's not. It's not working." Now instead, it's just like it doesn't feel real how easy it is. All right, so it never made sense to me. Okay, anybody. How many hours a week do you work now? Honestly, between YouTube, between helping Matt with different stuff on Amazon, between uh, working on my own eBay store, I'm literally sitting in this chair now almost all day, every day. I take my dog to doggy daycare, and that way I don't have to like worry about taking her out. Before, you know, I would take breaks, I would chill with my dog, I wouldn't, you know, have to worry about working that much. Um, but it's just lately, I've just had this this uh this new drive to kind of go back to early 2017 when i kind of just started understanding what drop shipping was and doing it and i was learning all these new things and experimenting with all these different strategies and all that and that's how i feel right now so i'm just while i feel like that i want to i want to work as hard as i can because the motivation is there to do it so yeah all right so i ran out of uh Ran out of questions here. Well, luxury car store said, I have an existing Amazon Seller Central account because I used to sell Merchant Fulfilled about three years ago. Do you think I can use that to start drop shipping? Yeah, I mean, I would. I don't see why not. Yeah, I don't see why, as long as the uh, the metrics are, are good and everything, uh, which they are, obviously. I mean, you haven't used it in three years. I just wonder if you'd get the buy box right away or if you'd uh, have to wait that 90 days. Like... Um, like most new sellers. All right, anyone got anything? Uh, there's 45 people in here now. Once again, guys, thank you for watching, and I really appreciate it. Um, hmm. While there's no questions, let me uh, let me just do this. I did this last time. It it worked pretty well. A lot of people enjoyed it and got the course. So. If you're interested in the virtual assistant course and you're at that point where you want to you want to learn how to hire and train a virtual assistant or just whether it's for drop shipping or whether it's for something else, um, last time I did a uh, $10 coupon for anybody who wanted to, to do that that was watching just as kind of, you know, a nice – and you know, you guys come support me, obviously, give you a little discount on the course. Sorry for all the people that paid the $20 for it. I mean, I really do appreciate the support on that. The course has gone really well for those of you guys that want to know. Um, it's actually uh, the best seller on Udemy right now. It has the best seller badge. And there's only been one person that's left less than a five stars. And uh, they left three and a half, and they had only watched 29% of the course. So I don't know. I, I tried messaging them and asking took it really personal. I was like, oh, you only watched 29% of the course. Like, what, what could I improve on? And uh, she never got back to me. So, yeah, but 66 people are enrolled so far. Um, it's been really – yeah, it's been good. Uh, I've gotten a lot of positive feedback on it for the price point. I'm not sure if it was a $200 course. People probably wouldn't think it was as great. But, you know, I think it does the job. It gets people uh, to, where, to where they know how to – because this applies to Amazon dropshipping as well. So it's not like you just need this for, for eBay, but let me, after I get this pitch out of the way, I, I won't talk about the course anymore until the very end, but I need to, here we go, course management. Uh, price and coupons, let me see here. All right, so there's five left and here is the link. There's five left of these $10 coupons. And yeah, I just put it in the uh, just put it in the chat for you guys. If you if any of y'all are interested in checking that out, um, it does you know help with the the support of the channel. But anyway, yeah, because it's not like I make a ton of money off of YouTube ads because I don't run any. So I make zero dollars off YouTube ads, even though I don't think I'd make any money if I. Uh, I did but 
let's get back to the questions. All right. Top Motivate, can you please tell us about the $5 trick you used in Sale Freaks? All right. All right. All right. So wasn't going to bring this up yet because I was still experimenting with it a little bit more. But I went to – I have some, like, higher dollar items. And I was going to allow a negative $5 uh, minimum profit and do, like, a negative 2%, negative 3%, something like that, and just experiment with – how low I could go and still make money. And like, obviously here's the thing, sale freaks, what it does is it actually uh, reprices based on competition. So even if you put like a negative 3% margin and you, then you put 3% for the ceiling and, and uh, negative three for the floor, it's going to price based on competition. So when I put negative three to three, I actually break even pretty much on the day because there's some items that I sell at like, you know, one, one or 2%, some that I sell at 0%, some that I sell at negative three whatever, but I still make money on cash back regardless of those transactions. So I ended up breaking even on the front end those days I was doing that. And I wanted to, to push it a little bit farther and uh, see what, see what was possible in terms of sales and still, you know, like trying to find an equilibrium of what makes me the most money on the back end and then doesn't lose me too much money on the front end, or at least breaks me even on the front end. Because in my mind, profit is profit. If I can make you know, if I can make a 2% margin on a million dollars of sales a month, I mean, sign me up. I'm down for that. Like, I don't care how much customer service I have to do or throw at it. I, I can handle it. So, yeah, because labor is cheap. And at least for, for virtual assistant, you know, labor. But anyway, so, yeah, I don't – profit is profit to me. So, you guys can look at me like an idiot if, you're, if you think I'm, like, dumb for going negative on the front end. Uh, on some transactions to make money on, you know, the back end, but that's what keeps me competitive. So I'm going to keep doing it and I'm going to keep pushing the limits of what I can do. So what happened is I had a few days where I did that and I did about, I did about 5,000, a little over $5,000 in sales, uh, two, two or three days in a row. Uh, yeah, it's like 5,500, maybe, maybe a little bit more. Um, and then it slowly went it didn't like, it didn't go down a lot. It just went down to like 5,500, 5,000, 4,800, whatever. But so I did that. And then I was trying to put the negative five on there to see, like I said, for those higher price items for like $150 item, I would still make money, you know, on the back end with cash back and just lose $5 on the front end. So what ended up happening instead of the negative five, I accidentally put $5 and I don't know how it happened, but I was getting $5 on every single sale and I, I did about, I actually did a little, a little more than a third of, um, of regular, but I made, I made a decent amount of money on the front end, uh, over 120 bucks on the front end on that one account. And then there was still money he made on the back end, but I tried doing it on my other account this morning. And then I put the other account back to negative five. Um, Sale freaks for some reason didn't reprice it quick enough because I have so many items. So I didn't get to see the full effect of it. But I'm gonna keep experimenting with it. Um, it just I don't know like how how it happened. It was like it was a really big fluke, I guess, that I still was able to generate sales, but it's interesting. So that's why I'm still experimenting with lowering the margin, raising the margin, lowering the margin, yeah, raising it, and really just pushing, pushing the boundary of of finding that equilibrium of how far negative can I go and still make more money. So obviously there's going to be a point where, you know, I'm going to lose money on the front end and it's going to wipe out my back end profits. So now like, you know, have to have to find the equilibrium. So that's kind of where, where I'm at. I'm experimenting all of that. All right. So, Hey, luxury car store. Thank you for uh, leaving that five-star review. I appreciate it. Frank the White, thank you for, for being uh, in that course as well. I, I appreciate it. Bottom line is that due to FBA, eBay will not be able to compete. Yep. They will not. All right, so what else? If you can't answer this, I understand. Are you providing Walmart receipts when Amazon is requesting invoices and Amazon is okay with them right now? I mean, so Amazon recently, I don't know if they changed it back, but – I haven't had to deal with this in a while. So they, I, I've never, they've, they've never asked me for invoices. Um, they asked me for invoices one time when I first started and that was when they suspended my account for a totally different reason. 
Um, that was like a year and a half ago, but now they're, they're, I heard they're accepting retail receipts as proof of um, invoices uh, for, for counterfeit item claims. So any thoughts on the new Amex 5%? Yeah, I think all 5% cards are great. And I use Amex for my, uh, my, my Amazon drop shipping business and I can do tons of volume on there with no issues. So yeah, I, I really like, I really like Amex. <clears throat> Trying to think if I had anything else I wanted to go over with anything I've been doing lately. Yeah, just experimenting with a lot of stuff. I mean, I don't really want to talk about too much stuff, not because I'm trying to hide it or like, you know, whatever, but I'm just trying to val validate that these things that I'm doing work and then report back on it. Because if I try it and it doesn't work, I mean, obviously I'll still let you guys know, but at the same time, it's like people can talk all they want to and about theories and all of this, but really I like to have, I like to have consistent evidence if I'm going to have a theory on something um, about how something works. And right now nothing's consistent enough for me to report back on. James, make sure you uh, are paying attention to if you use, web scraper app we have our own in-house um we have our own in-house sheet that has you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of suppliers that are not allowed that we're not allowed to list on because they will file copyright claims and that's due to and this is like also why you know a lot of this stuff i don't i res i can't talk about and i respect matt on a lot because he's built this business you know over a long period of time he's got a list with a bunch of brands that we can't list on and he's passed that on to the people that he's helped. So I, yeah, I mean, it's a huge plus having him on my side and I don't want to do anything to screw that up. But yeah, so like that's one thing we do to avoid the drop shipping on Amazon copyright claims is we just don't list on those listings. And I believe, yeah, like I was, I was going to say w, WSA uh, web scraper app, it has a list of items based on like, I guess their whole, the whole community has, uh has like put together a list of items as they come in so jolene yeah you can drop ship on amazon done uh what was it like 1.8 million this year my phone only tells me the last month that slowed my sales down a lot i don't know i i mean i i think i've a lot of you guys that come in here and you know are in these live chats regularly i'm buying a house in early december and i'm already you know under contract uh closing date is early december so right now i slowed my amazon sales down a lot because they hold a lot of your money and obviously you know i want to put a, a sizable down payment down so i'm taking some of the uh, money out of my business have then i'm going to have a bunch of money for uh taxes that i'm going to have to pay and all of that. So yeah, I'm just slowing my sales down right now. I'm going to let my sales fly on um, Black Friday and Cyber Monday. And then probably, you know, some days after that, but I'm going to do it at a higher margin. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to take like a three or 4% margin on the front end. My game plan is to take a high margin on the front end. And then also have like the four or 5% on the back end as well. And so, yeah, that means for me, I mean, it's worth it having having a ton of money out there at that point then um, and then scaling back quickly uh, right before I close if I need to. But I mean, I should be fine. It's all about just managing your money properly. All right. View my sales statistics. So, yeah. Okay. So I, I do like between 250 and $300,000 a month usually in the past 30 days on Amazon because I've raised my margin. And when I, yeah, when I say I've like, I've, I've throttled my own sales. It's just, I've raised my margin a lot. Um, I've only done 140,000 on Amazon in the past 30 days because I, I taken a few days off and I put my store in vacation mode. Uh, I had the margin up to where I was doing double digit profit margin. So yeah, it's just, it's just about managing the way you want to manage it. But let's see. 
I'm looking at my Amazon sales right now. Oh, I should tell you guys how much I did for Black Friday actually last year. That would be exciting. So, and actually what's crazy is I've had some days that are like close to it. Yeah, so I've done 1.7 million this year in, uh, in sales on Amazon. Average sale price on Amazon is way higher. It's $90. And last year, my, or my biggest day this year, I'll just say this is really random. This is insane. I didn't even, I didn't just didn't even realize I did this much on this day. But yeah, we were playing around with uh, loading a bunch of inventory in with inventory files and all of that and did $38,000 on February 22nd in one day. That was pretty nuts. I had to, I had to like shoot my margin up after that. So make sure the uh, team could handle all of the transactions. Um, Black Friday last year. Let me see. It didn't get too crazy. I only did twenty one thousand five hundred last year on uh, black on or that was Cyber Monday, I think. Let me see what day is Cyber Monday. Cyber Monday, two thousand seventeen. Sorry, I'm kind of going off here. I'm trying to trying to give you guys some some good. Uh, some good entertainment if you're going to stick around and watch. So, and some good information. All right. My computer's so bad right now. Also, with all the YouTube I've been doing, I've got so many videos on my computer that it has slowed down my computer a lot. I need to delete all that videos. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, Cyber Monday, November 27th. That's when it was. Yeah. I did 21,500. That's after returns. So, it was a lot more before that. Um, and between. So between, I'll do Christmas. That way, sales here. So between November first and Christmas of last year, I only did three hundred ninety thousand. But I, like I said, it was a way higher margin. We we had our margins up to control sales a little bit. What's up, Carter? Hey, this is my brother. Carter is in the chat. This Carter, is this your first time time joining us live? It's pretty sweet. <laughs> that's funny my brother he actually tried uh drop shipping on ebay i was gonna run his account for him and then i just got you know too too slammed with stuff and he didn't really want he didn't really want to run his account um he was using sale freaks and it was a good time to be in the game too it was when ebay was at its best and he just he let his account go to shit and we had to we had to stop his account so yeah, it was uh, it was not good times, but yeah, you guys can say you guys can say hey to dropship Carter or wannabe dropship Carter, I guess. <laughs> Just bought your VA course. May I ask, is dropshipping on Amazon a gray area? I mean, it's a gray area, but as long as you keep your metrics up, then Amazon's not going to mess with you. Yeah, yeah, it just wasn't a priority. I mean, here's the thing: if you've got a solid job and you don't really need uh, and honestly, like, you know, my brother, he's in sales, um, pretty awesome job, gets to travel around, be pretty entrepreneur, entrepreneurial in terms of going and getting clients and things like that. Um, yeah. But for those of you guys who don't really know my, my background too much, um, my brother was a professional poker player from the time he was like 18 to 25. And if you guys know what the World Series of Poker is, my brother actually has two World Series of Poker bracelets. Uh, he won them when he was like 21 and 23, I believe. So, yeah, um, that's, I mean, it's pretty crazy. If you just Google Carter Phillips poker, then you can uh, you can see some, some of his stuff. Really cool. I wish he had started, I wish he had started a YouTube channel when he was, uh, when he was on top in the poker world, but it wasn't it wasn't a thing back then, really. I mean, there were some people doing it, but yeah. Anyway, you guys can click click that link and see you you guys got a celebrity in the chat here. <clears throat> All right, so what are some tips for new dropshippers? 
All right, so first tip is to not worry about your profits. And, and I actually, here's, I have, I have a video. I'm just gonna drop the link in the video because it's a top, it, you know, it's my main, it's my main video on my channel. It's the top five tips for eBay dropshipping. I highly recommend you check that out. And then you also check the video out that is my advice to a new dropshipper. Um, I talk about everything in there that just the mentality aspect of what you should have when it comes to dropshipping and all of that. Right now, if you're starting off, this is a very good time to start off dropshipping because like I just, I showed people my sales um, for that eBay challenge I'm doing. And if you haven't seen that eBay challenge, uh, you need to you need to check that out. There's a playlist. I have two episodes so far. And here's the thing: everything in my channel now, Monday through uh, Friday, is going to be like an episode. So um, I'm going to have it in playlists so people can go back and look at it in order and see the progression of of each week. And just you know, like it's yeah, it's going to be it's going to be very organized and it's going to be very a lot better now for people to be able to learn um, and see what I'm doing in a more organized fashion. But yeah, so used to use DS Domination two years ago. What's the best software to find good products? Uh, right now, when I'm doing um, listing from Amazon, I use Chili Hunter. I've got a couple videos about product research in my channel. So yeah, I just want to reference. I'm gonna reference my videos that I already have topics on because that's gonna be the easiest for you to be able to find the information that you're looking for, um, rather than me just try to, you know. Uh, rather than me just trying to talk about it right now well yeah i have both the amex and chase amazon i'm just started should i be putting onto the cards or using cards to buy gift cards so if you're drop shipping on ebay from amazon and you're using uh sale freaks or you know you're using um stealth accounts or whatever then yeah you need to buy gift cards with your credit card and then load them into the sale freak software or if you're using your own uh, VPNs and ordering products manually upload the gift cards into those accounts as well So Danny Glad you could catch the tail end of this because I have just a few minutes left but Yeah Looks like it's uh, Looks like it's winding down there's still 54 people in here all right using auto DS tool Yeah, the, then I would uh, I would definitely use use gift cards you can only do like well I, I don't i don't know but i mean i feel like i couldn't do it before because you can only do like 150 orders a day on a, on your credit card but now you know with if you're just starting off then you can get away with it but if you start doing too many transactions they're going to block your account yeah jolene if you're um if you're not tax exempt and depending on where you are if you're inside or outside the u.s then yeah i mean 19 percent could be fine for a break even point i use 1.13 even though it's a little bit off i mean it's just this easy easy number for me to be able to list that in terms of break even but right now for my manual store i'm listing everything at 1.25 and then adjusting the price accordingly all right let's see do you recommend newbies to use sale freaks on the get-go? So actually, um, if I was just starting off and I was a newbie, I'll tell you this. I know I said go look at my tips and my my top five eBay tips, my um, my advice to a new dropshipper. But if I was just starting off right now again, and you can do this, I would have two stores. One, I would use sale freaks and I would upload a lot of products and I would, and I would use chili hunter right from the get go to get optimized listings and get those into sale freaks and start selling on from Amazon to eBay. The next store I would create would be a Walmart store slash home Depot store. And I would try to get tax exempt if possible as quickly as possible if I was you. And that Walmart and home Depot store would be all manual. And the Amazon to eBay would be uh, automated. And the reason I would do that is because if eBay dropshipping ever reverts back to what it was in March and April, 
you're gonna want to use sail freaks. Like I'm not I'm not just saying that because I, I pitch it. Obviously I'm pitching manual as well right now. You're gonna want to use sail freaks if it ever gets back to the way it was, which there's a lot of speculation that it will as soon as this Devin guy gets the CEO gets out of there. Um, if he ends up getting out of there. And their eBay is gonna realize you know they need the revenue of drop shippers. And things should go back to the way they were, hopefully. That's best case scenario, right? Worst case scenario, they, you know, flag everybody who's using software, everyone's sales, you know, go to shit that are using software, but, you know, you're fine because you built a manual store and you built your automated store at the same time. So that's how I would play the game now if I was just starting off. And I I thought I was going to reveal my store name and all of that at the end of, at the end of my, uh, my challenge of building a manual store. But at this point, the way it's going right now, I mean, it could be a good income eventually down the road, you know, pretty passive once I hire a virtual assistant, all of that. So yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah, that's that, like I said, that's how I play the game right now is create that, create a sale freaks account list from chili hunter, bunch of optimized listings, lower price, lower margin items, get a bunch of sales. Use the 5% cashback card if you have that available. Get taxes and ASAP. Build out your manual store at the same time. List mainstays brands, HDX brands, Ryobi from Home Depot, all of that stuff. And get taxes into Walmart and Home Depot as soon as possible and once you get started. So, yeah, that's how I would do it. I hope that helps. All right. Are you still selling open box? Yeah, I am still selling open box. Are sales low? Yeah, sales are sales are relatively low compared to what they were before. I did have a few days where, like I said, I was doing over five thousand dollars in sales uh, back to back to back days, or pretty close to it. And then you know sales slowed down because I did that I did that accidental thing where um, I accidentally put a, a five dollar minimum profit in my global settings instead of a negative five dollar profit. Uh, to allow and because I was trying to go negative if you guys didn't catch that earlier in the video if you just joined in I was trying to push the boundaries to see how far I could take my store in terms of um, the the floor of the account of the of the profit margin so when I when I go negative three percent I also allow it to go up to three percent so sale freaks reprices based on competition so if I do that I'm more than likely not going to go too far into the negative. Uh, my average profit per order should be right around break even. And then I just make all my money in cash back on the back end, which to me, profit is profit. So if you weren't tuned in for that earlier, that's my little spiel on that. But yeah, so what do I think about Zeke Analytics? I think it's like the same as Chili Hunter. Uh, Nahar is a great guy. He's the owner of Zeke, very active in the community. So I have nothing bad to say about Zeke Analytics. They are very similar programs. But yeah, guys, I'm gonna end this. Uh, I'm gonna end this video. Let's see if all of the coupons for the course were used. If they were, I'll throw some more up there, just last minute. But gonna end the video soon, and it looks like they they might have been. That'd be amazing if it if they were. In my night, oh, all of them are gone. That is crazy. You guys are too awesome. Thank you for supporting the course. I, I actually really, I mean, I really do appreciate it because the thing is, is it's not the money. I mean, yes, the money is, is nice, but it's, you know, it's long-term trying to build a sustainable course that, you know, actually helps people and gets views and shows up in the Udemy search. So yeah, just, I mean, it means a lot that you guys are supporting that. It, it really does. And I know that, I, I mean, you guys know that I try to help you as much as possible with answering questions and giving away as much information as I can. So yeah, just, it really feels good to, uh, to get back also sometimes. All right. So if those of you guys that, you know, still wanted to use the course and get that a $10 course and you're still here watching, um, let me see if I can get that in there. All right, so it's nine ninety nine. There is the there's the coupon link. Like I said, those other those other ones were all used up. So yeah, I just I made ten more for you guys. And if you bought the course before for twenty dollars, like I said, I'm sorry, and I really appreciate that you 
uh, supported the course, but yeah, man. Yeah. Thanks, Peter. I appreciate it. And I know, uh, Peter, I actually, I did a one hour coaching with him, but you know, I vented to him earlier, kind of got off uh, Skype and was just like, you know, I'm burned out, but yeah, thanks for the support, Peter. Thanks for the support everyone. And I will catch you guys on the next live. These happen every Wednesday at eight o'clock PM Eastern standard time. Check out my video tomorrow. It's going to be about the, it's going to be about me buying that item from an Amazon to eBay drop shipper. That's top rated plus showing you guys what he does, uh, showing you some of the messages between us. And then Friday is going to be my, my personal vlog and just like weekly reflection, just, you know, me unedited talking in front of a camera and yeah. All right. My brother says that he has to end with a Charlotte sighting. If you guys don't know, my dog's name is Charlotte. Now I'm, my brother's going to go make me get my dog, even though I didn't want to do that, but I'm going to go, I'm going to grab her real quick, real quick. All right. Oh, so here's my puppy. Her uh, her name is Charlotte. She's five months old. She's a full lab. She was sleeping. Just woke her up. But yeah, guys, thanks for tuning in and see you guys next week. Thanks.